The next item on the agenda is um, an update on the incident involving four uranium uh, extra four hexafluoride cylinders at the port of Halifax. Uh, I understand that we have representative from RSB Logistic joining us uh, via video, video conferencing for this item. And I understand uh, Mr. Eckel will be connected with us. Mr. Eckel, can you hear us? Yes, it's George Eckel for the record. I can hear you well. Okay, thank you. I understand that um, Ms. Andre Regimbal will make the presentation from CNEC staff as outlined in CMD 14M19. Ms. Regimbal, vous avez la parole. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, Rebonjour, Mesdames et Messieurs, membres de la Commission. I will do the introduction in French and then I will continue the presentation in English. Uh, alors, au fin du registre, je m'appelle André Régimbal, je suis le directeur général responsable de la réglementation des substances nucléaires. Je vous présente mes collègues, M. Sylvain Fay, directeur de la division des autorisations de transport et du soutien stratégique, et M. Martin Thériault, agent de transport dans la division de M. Fay. Euh, J'aimerais ajouter que M. Thériault est aussi un inspecteur. D'autres membres du personnel de la CCSN sont présents dans la salle et peuvent répondre aux questions aux besoins. On March 13, 2014, at approximately 10.15 p.m., the CNSC received a call from Transport Canada's Emergency Call Center, or Canutech, that there had been an incident at the port of Halifax involving a shipment of uranium hexafluoride, or UF6. The incident occurred at around 9 o'clock that evening when a flat rack carrying four cylinders filled with UF-6 were being offloaded from a sea vessel that was accidentally dropped. I'm sorry, not the sea vessel, but the, the rack was accidentally dropped back aboard the vessel from a height of approximately seven meters. The shipment consisted of four cylinders containing UF-6 which is a fissile material since it is composed of low enriched uranium at a quantity not exceeding 5% uranium-235 enrichment. And please note that this is not weapons grade material as was initially reported in the media. The UF-6 inside the cylinders is in solid form and maintained under negative pressure. Each cylinder is approximately two meters long by 80 centimeter in diameter and can hold up to 2,277 kilograms of UF-6. The material originated from Chester, England and was destined to the Westinghouse Fuel Fabrication Facility in South Carolina, United States to produce fuel for use in light water commercial reactors. Under the CNSC Packaging and Transport of Nuclear Substance Regulations, which align with the international transport regulations established by the International Atomic Energy Agency, this type of shipment requires the use of certified packages as well as a CNSC license to transport while in transit. The transport while in transit is defined as a shipment being transported through Canada in a situation where the place of loading and the final destination are outside Canada. This license, as with any other transport license, is issued by the CNSC designated officer. The package containing the UF-6 cylinders is also certified by the CNSC designated officer as meeting the requirements specified in the PTNS regulations and the international IEA transport regulations after a thorough technical assessment performed by professional engineers at the CNSC. When preparing the shipment for transport, each cylinder is inserted inside an overpack. In this case, it is a model UX30 overpack, which consists of a stainless steel casing filled with polyurethane foam, which serves as a thermal blanket for the UF6 and protects the cylinder from shocks during transport. The package is therefore comprised of the cylinder and the overpack 
and was certified by the CNSC designated officer on June 23, 2011 as an endorsement of the U.S. Department of Transport certificate issued under a similar process and used worldwide. On the next slide, and please, I apologize, I should have uh, indicated before the presentation that you have two copies of slide six in your deck. Uh, so uh, the slide six and the slide seven is going to be a new slide and I'll explain uh, later. Uh, also, I should have mentioned that, uh, I'm sorry, um, slide 20 has a better photograph that will illustrate um, the uh, the object of the of the slide. So resuming, uh, we're on slide six now. The company responsible for the shipment involved in the incident is RSB Logistic Inc. It is a transport company located in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, that offers a wide range of transport services, including freight forwarding services, and was licensed by the CNSC for this shipment. The CNSC designated officer issued the transport license to RSB Logistic on February 19, 2014, with an expiry date of May 31, 2014. During transport, the packages were tightly secured to a metal flat rack, which consists of a platform with two ends that is used for ease of transport. A total of four UF-6 packages were attached to the flat rack for a total weight of 18,000 kilograms. The total weight consisted of the four cylinders, their overpacks, and the flat rack. This slide shows the vessel, the Atlantic Companion. At the time of the incident, the vessel was docked at the port of Halifax and was being offloaded. This uh, slide shows the crane being used to offload the packages, which is a 1982 Pasico ship-to-shore crane with a, four, with a 40 metric ton capacity, or 40,000 kilograms. The next series of slides will show how the incident happened. So this first slide shows a schematic view of the crane lifting bridge getting into position to lift the flat rack with the UF-6 packages. The lifting is done by anchoring four attachment points underneath the lifting bridge to each of the corresponding four attachment points on the top of the flat rack. I will show some pictures later, later on to show you exactly how the anchoring is done. Before lifting starts, the crane operator has to secure the attachment points into their anchored position so that the flat rack can be lifted properly. Then the lifting, the lifting started, but what happened is that, the two, that two of the lifting points on one side of the flat rack had not been properly anchored. So all of the 18,000 kilograms of weight was being supported by only one side of the flat rack. Due to this tremendous weight supported by only one side of the flat rack, that side eventually sheared off from the flat rack. As the flat rack swung to downward in a pendulum motion to the vertical position and fell down into the cargo hold from a, a height of approximately seven meters. Immediately after the incident, the Halifax hazmat team was called on scene and the vessel Atlantic Companion was evacuated. The hazmat team established a safe perimeter zone of 50 meters around the vessel. This precautionary measure was taken after the hazmat team measured two microsieverts per hour at six meters away from the packages. This level of radiation was normal for this type of package and consistent with the information contained on the shipping document. The level of radiation measured present, presented no danger for people working around the packages. Just to get a sense of perspective, standing six meters away from the packages for a period of 10 consecutive hours would result in a dose comparable to one received by a passenger flying across Canada. Shortly after, RSB Logistic, the licensee, 
was contacted and immediately implemented its emergency response assistance plan and dispatched its personnel to the site. Early on, after being notified by Canutech, CNSC transport experts provided initial assistance from our CNSC headquarters in Ottawa to the first responders and other people who were conducting the incident response on site. The next slides will provide an overview of how the recovery operation was conducted. So this slide shows the flat rack with the four packages that dropped approximately 7 meters, or 23 feet, back into the ship's cargo hold. As per the CNSC and international regulations, this package design has to withstand a drop of 9 meters, or 30 feet, in order to be certified. And the package was certified. Slide uh, 15 shows again the, the flat rack as they dropped. Uh, so you can see the UF-6 cylinders, um, which landed on top of another container that was beneath uh, the container uh, under the, the flat rack. And uh, these show uh, plastic tarps that are above that container. And uh, you can see that the, uh, f the cylinders are still attached to the flat rack, and the end, one end of the flat rack is still attached to the base. These pictures uh, show the shared side of the flat rack. So you can see on the left-hand side, the side of the flat rack still attached to the base, and you can see the, the <clears throat> where it's sheared off. And the other part was still attached to the crane bridge. This is a closer look at the sheared off side of the flat track, which is still attached to the crane bridge. This is a picture of the sheared off side of the flat track after its removal from the, uh, the crane bridge. And you can see on the left the uh, section that was sheared off. This is a picture of the anchor points on the flat rack, which are essentially female connectors, uh, seen in the red circles. And you can see in the enlarged picture on the right-hand side that the connectors under underwent <coughs> extremely uh, tensile deformation, as these were supporting all of the 18,000 kilogram of the weight being lifted. These are pictures of uh, the anchor points underneath the crane bridge as shown in the red circles. The anchor points are male connectors, which slide into the female connectors on top of the flat track at each corner to secure the flat track under the crane bridge in order to lift it. On March 14, the, mor the morning following the incident, the CNSC sent an inspector, Mr. Martin Thériault, to the Port of Halifax to provide CNSC regulatory oversight of the recovery operation and any potential cleanup activities. Upon arrival, the CNSC inspector boarded the vessel and took additional measurement. Following his assessment, the inspector confirmed that all of the four packages involved in the incident were intact and that there had been no release of UF-6 from the packages. On Saturday morning, March 15, the emergency response team, under the guidance of the licensee, proceeded with the removal of the packages from the vessel and storage onto the docks. Once that was completed, the port terminal resumed normal operation. These are various pictures showing the packages uh, that were being removed from the vessel and getting ready for storage onto the docks. From this incident, from this incident the CNSC observed that the regulatory system worked as expected. That is, the packages contained UF-6 in a quantity not exceeding the quantity specified in the package design as, specified, as certified by CNSC and as per the CNSC license. RSB Logistic was duly licensed by the CNSC and all the required transport placards and labels were in place on the containers and the flat rack the packages withstood the drop without breach as, the package, as per the package design certificate. 
The first responders took immediate action and contacted Canutech, who in turn promptly contacted the CNSC. The licensee also promptly contacted the CNSC as required by regulations. The licensee responded effectively in implementing its emergency response plan as per the, li <clears throat> as per the license excuse me, and complied with regulatory requirements. In conclusion, the incident presented no risk to the workers, the public, and the environment. Radiation emitted from the packages remained at the expected level for normal transport for this type of package. It was perfectly safe to work around the packages. There were no breach of the packages. There were no spills of UF6. There were no security concerns, and there were no injuries. On Monday, March 24, four new UX-30 overpacks were sent to the port of Halifax to repackage the UF-6 cylinders and move them to destination. On Tuesday, March 25, the packages involved in the incident were opened, and a visual examination of each cylinder was performed by specialists who had been dispatched on the site by the consigner and the consignee, including a representative of the American National Standards Institute, ANSI, as the cylinders are designed and manufactured according to ANSI N14.1. The cylinders were declared free of damage and were repackaged inside the overpacks. The packages were reloaded onto new a new flat rack at that point, the CNNC inspector was satisfied that all regulatory requirements were met in order for the packages to resume their transportation to the United States. In closing, RSB Logistics will be submitting a report on the incident to the CNSC by April 3, 2014. What we understand so far is that the incident is the result of one side of the flat rack not being properly secured to the crane bridge prior to lifting the flat rack. As mentioned before, this resulted in all of the 18,000 kilogram weight being supported by only one side of the flat rack, and this ended up in, an un in the unsecured side moving downward in a pendulum motion towards the vertical position and caused the attached side to shear off from the flat rack base. The cause and circumstances of the incident are still under review. We do not know at this time if the incident was the result of a mechanical failure, that is, a problem with the anchoring me mechanism, or human error, that is, the operator not ensuring that the connectors were securely into their anchoring position. CNSC staff proposes to follow up with the Commission in writing, in due course, with any additional information that may become available regarding the cause and circumstances of the incident. Thank you very much.